So people have said a lot about the use of the word poetry in describing repeated scenarios in different Star Wars situations. Sometimes in these poetry scenarios, it shows how maybe different people handle the same situation in different ways and for different reasons, and you can draw conclusions between these characters in that relationship. There's also showing when one character has achieved something that you've already seen another character achieve. Like in this particular instance, you see Anakin becoming a peer of Obi-Wan. And in this other scene, you see Ahsoka doing the exact same thing, becoming a peer of Anakin. And that's kind of a shorthand to show growth in that, that kind of scenario. But in this video, the one I specifically want to highlight is the type of Star Wars poetry where we see the same character coming into the same situation three times. And it shows not only the growth of the character, in a sense, but also Obi-Wan's actual compassion towards all people, despite who they are. In that first clip that I played, um, we see Obi-Wan holding a dying person in his lap, or in his arms, and um, it's very similar to a sculpture by Michelangelo called La Pieta, that means compassion, which is obviously where I got the name for this video. And that's a recurring theme in all three of these scenes. There's also a touch on the face that the dying person, and in the first scene it was Qui-Gon touches everyone on the face. I think it, in a way, kind of references back to what may be the actual original version of this scenario, which is from Return of the Jedi when Vader tells Luke to take off his mask. And thematically it does fit in because it does play the Imperial March when Vader dies which is more or less his theme in that movie. But I don't want to add a fourth theme in one video. It seems like a lot. So we see that touch on the face. It's kind of taking off the mask. He pretty much says, okay, we lost Duel of Fates. Come here, I got a job for you. We're doing it the hard way. The next clip here is Qui-Gon's theme uh, played as Obi-Wan's maybe showing his starting point for compassion. So that brings us to the next clip, which is of a person that we find out is very close to Obi-Wan, actually, Satine, the current leader of Mandalore. That is actually the scene where it's revealed how serious their connection is. I kept the video running because I really like Satine's cold business face. Much better than her just got run through with a Darksaber face, which we're about to see. In this next clip, Satine dies in Obi-Wan's arms and touches him on the face to remove the mask, so to speak. And Obi-Wan seems to have his own little what-if episode. Satine's theme actually stops playing for just a brief moment while he does that. And as is normal with Jedi, we see him react to her dying right before it happens. So lastly, we have this guy. This guy is Sisyphus, the Greek mythological character who faked his death and Hades was so bitter about it that he condemned him to roll on a boulder up a hill only for it to fall down right before he gets to the top and you have to roll that boulder back up the hill and he just kept having to do that over and over again. That's pretty much Maul. And we see him alone hiding from the Inquisitors on Malachor. He is at a point in his life where he seems to be actually looking for redemption in some way. He just does not have the tools to even know how to ask for it or who to ask for it from. 
But we don't get that because Maul is Sisyphus and he's got to roll that boulder up the hill. And he forces his way from kindergarten redemption class all the way up to the master level class. Maul doesn't seem to know whether he's chasing Obi-Wan or being chased by Obi-Wan. Should have been his first clue that he was getting in over his head. Sam Witwer, the voice actor for Maul, does a pretty good job explaining what's going on between these two characters in the scene in just about any interview you can find of him. Uh, I recommend you do that, and I'm going to cut out the two minutes of talking about this scene that I did, just so we can just get down to the point, which is Obi-Wan being compassionate even to Maul, who's the person who killed the other two people that we talked about in this video. The one particular thing I'd like to point out about this scene, though, is that it does begin with a solo cello and solo bass. Visually, it's kind of like Maul and Obi-Wan alone in the galaxy to me, which I think is interesting. <laughs> 